The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Second chapter, text number 14, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 14th of February, 1975, in Mexico. Agama Painu Nitya Tan Sisik Kasavala. So, from last night's discussion, it is to be concluded that we are not going to die. Krishna said, not only he, but also Arjuna and all others who are present in the battlefield they will continue to exist. So, how we shall exist, that is also discussed, that as we are existing now, we are accepted a type of material body and existing. Similarly, after finishing this body, I will accept another body and exist. Now the question is that in what kind of body I shall exist after finishing this body. That is also explained that if we like, we can exist in the higher planetary system where the duration of life is very, very long, the sense enjoyment is very, very perfect, more than this world, this we can have. Similarly, we can exist in lower grade of life like cats, dogs, insects, trees, aquatic life. Like and we can exist also in the same way as we are existing now. And we can exist also exactly like God, eternal life of bliss and knowledge. Actually, spiritual body means eternal life of bliss and knowledge. This body which we are possessing now, material body, it is neither eternal nor blissful nor full of knowledge. Every one of us, we know that this material body will be finished, and it is full of ignorance. We cannot say anything what is beyond this world. We have got senses, but they are all limited, imperfect. Sometimes we are very much proud of seeing and challenge, can you show me God? But we forget to remember that as soon as the light is gone, the power of my seeing is gone. Therefore, the whole body is imperfect and we full of ignorance. The spiritual body means full of knowledge, just opposite. So, we can get that body, next life, and we have to cultivate how to get that type of body. We can cultivate to get the next body in the higher planetary system, or we can cultivate the next body like cats and dog, and we can cultivate such body as eternal blissful knowledge. Therefore, the best intelligent person will try to get next body full of blissfulness, knowledge, and eternity. That is explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Jad gatyana nivartante sadhamam paramam mama. The, that place, that planet, or that sky where you go and will never return back to this material world. In the material world, even if you promote to the highest planetary system, Brahma Loka, still you will have to come back again. And if you try your best to go to the spiritual world, back to home, back to Godhead, you will not come again to accept this material body. Then the question is that if I am eternal, why there are so many miserable conditions of life? And why I am forced to die? So this is actually the intelligent question that if I am eternal, then why I shall remain in this material body which is subjected to death, birth, old age, and disease? 
therefore Krishna in his path that these uh, miserable condition of life is due to this material body. Those who are karmis uh, means those who are engaged in sense gratification, they are called karmis. The karmis do not care for future. They simply want immediate uh, facilities of life. Just like a child without the care of the parents, he plays whole day and doesn't care for future life, do not take any education. But the, in the human form of life, if you are actually intelligent, we shall try our best how to get that life or body where there is no more death, birth, old age and disease. So this Krishna consciousness movement means to educate people for that purpose. Now one may say that if I simply devote in Krishna consciousness, then how my material necessities will be supplied? So the answer is there in the Bhagavad Gita that anyone who is simply engaged in Krishna consciousness for his necessities of life, Krishna will look up. Krishna is looking after for everyone's maintenance. Eka Jabhunam Vidudhati Kama, that one supreme person is maintaining the necessities of all living entities. So, for a devotee who is trying to go back to home, back to Godhead, there will be no scarcity, be rest assured. Yes, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Tisam Satudu Yuktana Jugokhivam Baham Maham. A devotee who is engaged always in my service, I look after how his necessities of life will be fulfilled. Practical example is that in this Krishna consciousness moment we have got one hundred centers. And in each temple not then not less than twenty five, up to two hundred and fifty devotees live. So we have no fixed up uh, means of income. And we are spending in all the branches eighty thousand dollars per month. But by grace of Krishna, we have no scarcity, everything is supplied. People are surprised sometimes that these people do not work, do not take any profession, simply chant Hare Krishna, how they live. So that is no question. If cats and dogs can live at the mercy of God, the devotees can live very comfortably by the mercy of God. There is no such question. But if somebody thinks that I have taken to Krishna consciousness, but I am suffering for so many things. For them, or for all of us, the instruction is, matras parasāsya kontiya sītusna sukha This pains and pleasure is just like winter and summer. In the winter, the water is painful, and in the summer, the water is pleasing. So what is the position of the water? It is pleasing or painful? It is neither painful, neither pleasing, but in a certain season, by touching the skin, it appears to be painful or pleasing. Such pains and pleasure is explained here is, they are coming and going. They are not permanent. Agama apaina anitya means they are coming and going, therefore they are not permanent. Krishna therefore advises, tāna titikha sabharita, just tolerate. But you do not forget your real business, Krishna consciousness. Don't care for this material pains and pleasure. Of course, we shall try our best if there is, say, pains and pleasure to counteract it. But even it is not done, don't be uh, misled by these so-called pains and pleasure. Uh, so one of the devotional qualities is titiksha, tolerance. That should we learn how to tolerate in every condition of life. Just like those who are actually brahmanas in India. Uh, we have got also brahmanas in those ten countries now created. 
So, because it is pinching cold, they do not forget to take bath early in the morning. It is simply practice. It may be painful for one day or two days, but if you practice, it is no longer painful. So one should not give up the practice of taking bathing early in the morning because it is severe cold. That is not. Similarly, in the summer season, because it is scorching heat, uh, it, one should not decide that we shall stop cooking. Because in the kitchen it may be too hot, but for that reason we cannot give up cooking. Similarly, all the rules and regulations that are there, it may be painful, but we cannot give it up. We have to learn how to tolerate. Therefore, Krishna and Bhai says, Tāna-tithikha-sabhārata. My dear Kajan, the uh, good descendant of Bhart Maharaj, you try to tolerate this. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has advised, therefore, just to advance in Krishna consciousness how one should be tolerant. He has said, Pinadati Suniche, no, just you become humbler than the grass. Just like on grass, so many people are trampling over, he does not protest. Pinadati Suni, Taroropi Suishuna, and tolerant more than the tree. Just like see, somebody is taking his branches, sometimes he is snatching his fruit, sometimes he's cutting it, but still the tree is giving you shelter, fruit and leaves and fruits and flowers. So anyone who is desiring to go back to home, back to Godhead, he has to learn to be tolerant and forbearing. That is the instruction of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. For himself, one should always think that he has no respect. He doesn't require to command any respect. But all respects he offers to others. In this way, if we become practice, then we become fit for going back to Godhead, back to home. That will be explained in the next verse. Janahi Navatayam Te Te Purusam Purusara Sarva Samadukha Sukham Dhiran Samadukha Kalpa If one practices like that, then he becomes fit for going back to home, back to God. So, practice, anything you practice, in Bengali it is said, the Shorirena Mahasaya Jasahave Taisa. You practice in your body, and if you uh, come to the point of tolerance, then anything you can practice and it will be tolerable. Just like in the morning when we go for morning walk, they are practicing running. Eh? So many people are practicing running, but I cannot run. So if I practice for some days, I can also run. So anything you practice, you will be successful. So, if by practicing Krishna consciousness you can go back to home, back to Godhead, why should you neglect it? That will solve your all problems. The real problem is birth, death, old age and disease. And if you can solve this problem simply by practicing some regulatory principles, why don't you do it? So, that is our request. We are opening hundreds of centers to give training to the people to practice this and go back to home, back to God. But you cannot go back to home, back to God so cheaply. Uh, you have to practice certain regulative principle, then you will be fit. Uh, that is not very difficult, uh, and if you practice, that will be very easy. And uh, the beginning should be chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, so that you will be fit for practicing also. So therefore take full advantage of this moment. Now it is when we have got center in your city. I request you to take uh, full advantage of this Krishna consciousness moment and be successful in your life. But rest assured, do not be misled, that after finishing this body, every one of us uh, we'll have to accept another body. If we neglecting 
the rules and regulations, if we have to accept the body of a dog, just imagine how much uh, displeasing it will be. We have to take to uh, this principle, as Krishna says, madhyajino pi janti ma. Anyone who is engaged in Krishna consciousness, he comes to me. Practice this, Krishna consciousness, and go back to home, back to God. Any question? No question? Yes, if you practice Krishna consciousness, you go to spiritual bodies, they will also spirit and spiritual bodies. Yes, you'll get spiritual bodies. Spiritual bodies are already there. It is simply covered by material body. You have to cure this material body, then you get your original spiritual body. It is curing process, just like one has got fever. Fever is not permanent, temporary. But cure this fever, then you healthy. You say, I want to take the body, so you As long as you are unable to go back to home, back to Godhead, you have to change this body, either dog or this or that or this. And then, Eight million four hundred thousand forms of body. You have to accept one of them. Now you, have, you make your decision whether you are ready to accept all these different types of bodies or you get original uh, spiritual body. In the spiritual body there is no more birth, death, old age and disease. And in the material body continuously there should be birth, death, old age and disease. You can get the spiritual body simply by little cultivation in this human form of life. But if you get next, other than human form of life, then you have to wait again millions of years to come to this human form of life. After all, we are under the stringent laws of nature. We are, everyone of us, we are under the grip of the laws of material nature, it will go on. You cannot change it unless you come to Krishna consciousness. Yes, it is progressive or degressive also. Huh? Why do you think Because we act like animals. Because it is true in the material world, once he behaves badly, he has to stay where he is. He cannot do that, but he cannot go back. Now sometimes he is given the down class. Sometimes he is degraded, go to the down class. Yes. That is quite natural. <laughs> eh? So, any question? He may not believe in the law, but law is law. If somebody says, I can commit some criminal act, but I don't believe in the court's judgment, will it be act? You believe or not believe, the law will act. Just like if you infect some disease, infectious disease, if you contaminate, then you must develop that disease. That is the law. So we are contaminating ourselves with different laws of material nature, and according to that law we have to accept the body. The material laws are not under your control. You are under the control of material law. Yes. The planets, they are different plants, mean different facilities of material convenience. So who is in charge of giving us God. Ishara Sarabhutana Mridesha Arjuna Krishna. God in his super soul, feature, he is situated in everyone's heart and he is seeing all our activities and he is awarding uh, the different kind of bodies. So we have to accept that we are fully under control. If childishly we say that we are independent, that is foolishness. You want to know if the senses, the self-sensing now has originally belongs to the soul, that is the self-sensing Yes, just like a man is in a normal condition, but he becomes mad, the same senses are there, but he is in abnormal condition. So, when we are in this material world, we are using our senses in abnormal way. So, when we cure these senses, we get 
into normal condition, that is spiritual life. So sarvapādhi vinirmuttam tatparatvena nirmala. We have to give up all this designation of life and we have to become purified, then we come to our normal condition. Hmm? Yes, he is engaged in Krishna consciousness. He doesn't know anything but Krishna. Actually, spiritual consciousness keeps the body fit. Just like in the body, the spirit soul is there and the consciousness is also there, may be polluted, but as soon as the spirit soul gives up this body, the body immediately begins to decompose. So the decomposition of the body is checked by the spiritual presence. So if you become advanced in spiritual consciousness, there is no question of suffering from bodily disease. Yes, by your present position you can simply take the information that the dimension of the spirit soul is one ten thousand part of the tip of your hair, very small particle, that is spirit soul. And the dimension is given, you have got your hair, you can just imagine only, you cannot measure. And you divide the top of your hair into ten thousand parts, and that one part is the measurement of the spirit soul. That small particle is so powerful, just imagine what is spiritual power. It is less than the atom. Therefore, it is described in the Vedic Anoraniyang Mahato Mahiyang. The spirit is greater than the greatest and is smaller than the smallest. There is form, just like this body is compared with the dress. Now, just like in your present material form, you have got hand. Therefore your coat has got hand. If you have, you have got leg, therefore your pant has got leg. Therefore it is to be assumed that the spirit soul has got form and it has developed into hands, legs, heads, everything. It is not formless, it has got form. But with our material eyes, as the present gross eyes, we cannot find it. Therefore we say it has no form. Hmm? Yes, he says that is God and Son of God. That is parampara. Unfortunately, nobody cares to follow Jesus Christ. That I must say. The Jesus Christ says, "Thou shalt not kill," and Christians are very expert to kill. <laughs> they take pride in bullfighting. This is the position. So it is very difficult to find out a real Christian. You follow the temple procedure, you can remain anywhere, it doesn't matter. So when one takes to bhakti means he understands the inferior quality of karma. So you take the superior quality activities and you forget inferior quality. Param Vishtani Bhattate, this is the Vedic verse. When one finds out superior engagement, he gives out inferior engagement. The soul changes from this heart to that heart. That's all. Just like you are running your car, it stops. Then you change this car to that car. <laughs> this is it. It is very common thing. There is another way to go to God. If there is another No. <laughs> because it is stated in Bhagavad Gita, Bhaktyamama vijanati, jamana jasyami, tattva. 
tato man tato gatva dusadita dhanantaram. Nobody is allowed to enter kingdom of God without becoming bhakta. There is no difficulty of becoming bhakta because the to become bhakta means four principles. One thing is to always think of Krishna. Manmana, Bhagavad Bhakta. That is Bhakta. Simply by thinking of Krishna. That is Hare Krishna. When you chant Hare Krishna, you think of Krishna. You become Bhakta. Immediately. Then, after becoming Manmana, Bhagavad you worship me. Mag Namaskuru, I am offer obeisance. It is very simple thing. If you think of Krishna, and if you offer little obeisances, and if you worship Him, these three things will make you bhakta, and you go back to home, back to God. We are teaching this thing, chant Hare Krishna, offer obeisance to Diti, and worship, and finish. Otherwise they should go to the Gyan path. It requires so much knowledge, so much grammatical, so much nose present, present, you know, so many things. You avoid all these things. Simply do these three things and you become Why don't you take the easiest process and go back to home, back to God?